Hey everyone, welcome to Tacos Tuesday with Vince Montero, that's me. Normally it's at 10, sorry, it's 10.03. I know, uh, for shame, I was in, <laughs> I got a speeding ticket. I'm actually in, uh, in our office uh, recording some other things and so was heading to the office and apparently was going a little bit too fast. So, uh, apologize for being three minutes late. Hopefully you guys um, gave you, uh, Hopefully it gave additional time to people to join. Um, as always, let us know where you're checking in from. Right now we are live on Facebook, YouTube, and I believe LinkedIn. So let us know where you guys are, are watching from. Um, always like to uh, see from where in the world everyone is checking in from. Um, you guys will notice that I'm gonna be kind of looking sideways a little bit. I have a new, hey Brazil. I got a camera that's in front of me now, so it's a little bit different than what I'm usually, I'm usually looking right at the camera, right at you guys, but I've got a, a camera here that's in the middle and my, my screen is now to the, to the right or left. Brazil is in the house, who else is here? Um, we usually get a lot of people from um, Eastern Europe, which is always great to see, and uh, England, UK, uh, um, where I used to live. Hey, Paulina and Dub, how are you guys doing? And, and from India, yes, a lot, a lot of people from India as well. Um, good to see you guys. Um, hopefully you are ready for today's topic. Uh, we are effectively doing a round two. Um, we've never actually uh, done this before, so several weeks back, um, probably about two months ago, we did an episode with Karen Thomas, who is our uh, listing expert, our listing optimization expert. Scotland's in the house and from Florida. How are you guys doing? UK, I see UK's there, Pakistan is there. Anyone from California? California, there we go. <laughs> Hi neighbor, hi Casey. Um, and uh, yeah, number one fangirl. Hey Audrey, <laughs> good to see you. Glad we're back on YouTube. <laughs> For all you guys that were that missed us while we were on uh, YouTube hiatus, huh? Um, so two months ago, we had Karen Thomas, who's our product listing optimization specialist in the house. She uh, gave a great overview of a listing, uh, actually a couple of listings for one of our users, and um, who's actually scheduled to be on this call later today as well. Um, so hello from China, Amazon FBA channel. Um, we uh, effectively did an overview of a couple of listings and uh, broke down for you guys what it takes to have uh, a really quality listing that will stand out. Um, you know, we are here to talk about, uh, there's Scotland, hey Jack. We've, we're here to talk about uh, Cormac in California is also here. We're here to talk about PPC, right? This is why you guys um, fo follow me in the, these these chats and or these sessions, I should say. Hopefully you follow my tips of the week, which are also available on YouTube, on our YouTube channel for Helium 10. I do a tip of the week in between these Tuesdays where we're doing these, these shows. Um, hi, Mohammed in Canada. Um, so, but we we do like to talk about listing optimization because it doesn't really matter how good you are at PPC if your listing isn't good, right? You can spend five thousand dollars a day and on advertising to a listing that is subpar, and you're not going to really see the change, the effects of the PPC that you want because the listing isn't where it should be. So I really try to stress uh, the listing optimization as much as possible. The Pakistan Extreme Commerce Pakistan. Hey, I've heard of, of, of you guys. That, that's awesome that you guys are here, here watching today. Thank you for being here. Um, so PPC starts with a good listing, you know, to be honest. Uh, good PPC starts with good keyword research. Actually, I should say that. <laughs> PPC starts with good keyword research that you're going to then build into your listing, right? And then from that, it's going to build into good PPC campaigns because you can also draw uh, the keywords that you want to target from that keyword research that you've done. Um, of course, that's what we're known for here, here at Helium 10 mostly is for our keyword research tools, Magnet and Cerebro. Um, so tools I use, tools I used before I started working here uh, as a consultant for two years uh, when I was doing PPC. Um, and as a consultant, the first thing, <laughs> thanks Jake, I need a haircut. The first thing, <laughs> 
the first, I can always leave it to Jake to, to make a comment about uh, something personal like my hair. It's, it is, it's very pointy right now. It, it's accentuated right now because the blue background. So it's, it's, it's an optical illusion, Jake. It's not that tall. No, it is. Um, what was I saying? I completely lost track. As a consultant, the first thing that I would do when I was talking to a client is look at their listing. Um, I would do an audit of the listing first and foremost to make sure, hey, did they do the correct keyword research? Is there additional information that they could have found that they didn't find and didn't incorporate into their listing? Um, because I learned very early on that it didn't really matter how good I was at doing PPC for the user, uh, for the client, I should say, um, if the listing wasn't up, up, to, up to speed, up to where it should be, or as good as it could be, we were always gonna lose out to a competitor with a better listing, better optimized, better indexing, and so on. So I, I incorporated that into my processes with clients when I would talk to them, is doing a, a, an audit first. That was always step one, phase one, keyword research, listing optimization. I would, I would give suggestions to the, the client or I would make the updates myself, depending on um, the, the, the contract. Um, and consistently, you know, we saw improvements in the PPC performance. Now, granted at that time, I was also doing the PPC campaigns and building them for them too, but it all starts with the product listing, right? Or the product detail page as Amazon likes to call it. They don't like calling it a listing, a product listing anymore. Their, their preferred language for a product listing is a detail page. So I try to use both because <laughs> I do talk to Amazon a lot too. Um, so uh, for those of you that are maybe new to this uh, this show, what we do is we always cover a topic like I just uh, covered. We're just gonna, in this uh, session, we're gonna look at the changes that were made to that couple of listings that we reviewed two months ago with Karen and who is on here today. <laughs> hey Karen, Hi, good to hey. see you. You too, <laughs> thanks for having me on again, I'm honored. You it's are very you. welcome. Yes. So um, again, Karen was here two months ago with me to look at a couple of listings and she gave some um, uh, an overview of the changes that she would suggest to be made. Um, those changes were made. Uh, they were completed about a month ago, literally to the day, March, Mar wait, what's today? Um, March 19th is when I was talking to the, the, the user that they actually, actually had completed the suggestions that you had given them, um, uh, Karen, all except for one listing, which is a listing we're gonna look at. Um, and then when we looked at the PPC, and again, no changes were done to the PPC, we did that on purpose. Um, the PPC was as good as it was gonna be before these changes were made. And that's how I knew the, this particular user because we were working together on a case study um, for sponsored display campaigns actually. So um, we did a great job with the PPC. Um, and I just want, I wanted to see, hey, the listings were good, but they could yeah. they could be better, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah. so I thought, you know what? What a great way to showcase um, the effects of uh, updating a listing um, and then on PPC. So that is really what we're going to be sharing with you guys today. Um, but first, before that, we always collect questions ahead of time. Karen, you're welcome to to uh, stay and answer. Would you, I think we just have a couple of questions. Uh, you know, in between episodes, if you guys have questions, maybe that we don't get to in this episode, or maybe you have ideas for a specific topic that you'd like for me to cover in these biweekly sessions, um, there is an email that you guys can use for that. It's ppcam at helium10.com. So jot that down. Um, again, if by the end of the session, we don't answer your question, send it in. Um, or if you have topics that you'd like to, uh, us covered. Um, you won't get a reply to this email. This is an in, 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 inbound email only. Um, sometimes I see emails in there about helping someone with, a, with doing their product research. And I'm like, that's, that's really not what this email is for. It's straight up for PPC questions um, for this show uh, specifically. So um, uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, sorry, I'm just, I'm looking at the comments too. Great to see Scott and he's always uh, in here as, uh, as well. Um, Jack, and um, thank you for the kind words, uh, Audrey. You're really sweet. <laughs> yeah, Karen, Karen's, well, Karen's, Karen's the cute one in, in the in the group for sure. <laughs> Audrey is like my favorite person ever. I'm obsessed with her. Seriously, I love her so much. She's so cool. <laughs> She's our number one fan. So um, yeah, so we're gonna get into we're gonna answer some of those questions you guys have sent in first ahead of time. Um, for those of you that are brand, brand new though, that don't know why we call this Tacos Tuesday, just briefly, 
TACO stands for total ACOS. So it's not just because we like tacos. Uh, do you like tacos, Karen? I think, I think. Vince, I love all food, if I'm being <laughs> honest, but I do love tacos. Especially, so much. especially the past year. Uh, yeah. I loved I got, it a little too much, but yeah, I, the, I feel like. I, I feel like we COVID need like 20. a fun. I feel like we need a fun like Tacos Tuesday theme song, you know, just to like really get pumped up. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. Uh, we, maybe know? we'll do like a, a Cinco de Mayo themed one or something. Yes. Um, which is actually coming out. Oh, but actually, uh, on that note, before the end of this, before this is over, I will be talking about our next one in two weeks. It's going to be a very special episode. Ooh. But again, those of you that are just joining your PPC, your ACOS is very important to monitor. However. We like to look at your total ACOS because we do know, again, PPC is your branding, it's your, it's your advertising, it's your billboard on the side of the road. It's gonna mm -hmm. affect your organic sales down the line eventually. Um, so we know that since we know advertising, it's the point of advertising is to affect organic sales. We like to connect those measurements. Um, here at Helium 10, we have the ability to do that because my, my uh, PPC tool ads is connected to profits, which is our other tool. Um, so we can actually combine your PPC spend and sales to your total. And we came up with the new metric called total ACOS or tacos. So it's, it's, that's why it's called tacos Tuesday and we love tacos. So that <laughs> said, hopefully you guys are clear on the topic. You're clear on why we call this tacos Tuesday. You're clear that I got a speeding ticket, which is why we were a few minutes late. <laughs> and, Dang it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's my own fault. I, I, I drive too fast. Uh, I, don't, I don't even have a sports car, but whatever. So first question, uh, this was an incoming question again from the email that I guys I should just shared with you guys. Uh, um, Ali asks, hello, I just wanna ask, do you choose right keyword to put in broad or to put in phrase, or is it possible to put a keyword in all three match types? So uh, our PPC management tool um, actually uh, advocates to use the broad and uh, exact match in separate campaigns. Um, broad is should be in its own campaign because you're going to get search terms to those keywords that you're not going to get in the exact match. Um, even in phrase matching, um, Ali, you're going to limit the scope of that search uh, or that keyword to get search terms. So broad means just that. If you if you have uh, broad uh, dog collars, broad, you're going to get all kinds of matches that include the words dog um, and collar. Uh, sometimes sometimes one or the other too. So. Um, so you'll get blue dog collar, big dog collar, big dog, small dog, things like that. If you just put exact dog collar, it's just that exact keyword. So people are going to search for that. It's only, you're only bidding on that exact term. So we like to put those in separate campaigns. We call them a research campaign and a proven campaign or performance campaign. Um, you could try phrase. If you're going to do phrase as well, I would still consider that more research again, because you're going to get search terms to that phrase keyword. So I might put those two uh, phrase ma or, uh, ma uh, matches into the same campaign, but definitely always keep uh, the exact match uh, separate. However, make sure um, if you're talking about just putting keywords in different exact match or different match types, um, the exact when you do exact match, that means that you know that that keyword converts for you. So if you don't know that that keyword is going to convert for you, then don't make it exact match. <laughs> so exact match is really only reserved for those keywords that you absolutely know uh, will convert for you. If you don't know that and you try to run it, you're just testing it because it's got a lot of search volume. It's just going to eat through your budget and it's probably not going to get you the results that you want. So you want to reserve those exact keywords for keywords that have actually proven themselves um, over time, you know, uh, over maybe a month of, you know, looking at the data. So hope that answers that question. I think we have just two more from Anne. Um, can I still create a campaign rule to automate in ads manager, even my campaigns is not in the honeymoon period anymore. Um, so this question came up uh, is in between from the last episode. The last episode we talked about the honeymoon period uh, that Amazon gives you. Um, Bradley did a whole thing about it, the honeymoon Maldives. Uh, I think it's honeymoon in Maldives. Uh, but he basically were, we were emphasizing that when you're a brand new product, um, Amazon does give you kind of a honeymoon period. They basically, because they don't have any data on you yet. So how are they gonna know if your product's good if they don't give you a shot? It's basically Amazon giving you a chance. Um, so you definitely wanna create campaigns in, right away to take advantage of that honeymoon period uh, that Amazon's giving you. Um, and you definitely, I would, but I wouldn't automate it. I would just launch the campaign right when you launch the product and then manually update the the, the rules. Um, so uh, 
Anne's mentioning in ads, our, our PPC management tool is called ads. So when she, when she mentions that, she's basically saying, can I just turn on automation? Um, I always advocate in general, doesn't matter what period you're in, your product could be live for months. I always advocate for you guys to manually look at the suggestions that we give you based on the rules that you've entered, just to make sure that they're aligned with your actual goal uh, before you turn on automation. All right, next question. Uh, Rosina, your taco sessions are super helpful and provide so much value. Oh, thank you. Uh, I am planning to launch a product with three color variations. What is the best way to structure the PPC campaign to have clear data? Um, so this is an interesting question because it, <laughs> We basically have all kinds of uh, uh, ways of doing this. If you want, if you want to spread uh, coverage, um, you can have a, a PPC campaign for each color variation, right? So you have one campaign for your blue color, one for your pink, one for your black, whatever. Um, if that's the color variation, um, that's the way to really test individually how the colors perform. Um, but if you're doing kind of an A-B test and you want to make sure the keywords are the same, the bids are the same, and then really and really test it that way. If you have the budget, that's actually the way I recommend that you do that so you have the most broad coverage. Um, but if you don't have a, a lot of budget, then just put them all in the same campaign. Um, try to use not maybe colored specific words, use keywords that are specific to the product. And then just see over time, maybe a month or two, which color does the best to all these same keywords, all the same bid prices, which color does the best? And then maybe isolate that color uh, and pull it out into its own own campaign. So you could do it either way, Rosina, and it all really is dependent on how aggressive, I guess, that you wanna be um, with your PPC. Um, so on that note, thank you for bearing with the PPC focused questions, Karen. <laughs> uh, so what I'm gonna do actually I love is it. we're gonna share a screen of the uh, uh, one of the profiles that the user that we talked to, Kanal, who actually should be on in like 10 minutes, um, oh, yeah. he didn't update yet, right? So we're gonna look at that first. So let's share the screen. So one thing I wanna think about though is, you know, they have these amazing images, but there's so much more you can do. You know what I mean? A lot of times we think one image and we think one image, but we don't know all the cool stuff that you can do with one image, right? That mm -hmm. space, and this is such valuable space. And I think most, you know, big sellers would agree that your images and your title and your video are the most powerful parts of your listing. So when you think about listing optimization, these are the places where you want to start because these are where you're going to have, you know, the 80-20 principle where you're going to get the most bank for your buck. Perfect. So that was a little snippet. I forgot we were going to do that. Uh, That's so, fun. Yeah. So you can see it was probably maybe a little bit long. It was, I was in a sweater. So it was definitely at least two months ago that we last yeah. spoke. <laughs> but uh, uh, let's uh, share the screen um, on the on the one that I had um, pulled out. And then um, we're going to, again, look at just really quickly uh, another listing. Um, OK, perfect. So um, that is actually the account. All right, so um, this, there it is. So this one is very similar to kind of what we just shared. Um, and what 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 uh, Karen was talking about was just not taking full advantage of the real estate of the images. Um, and you can see that one we just showed you at least had, a, I think, a testimony in it or something. But it's just images. The images are great, but they're kind of standalone. So it, it, it's not really fully utilizing the, uh, the power of it as, as much as it could. So in that little snippet, that's kind of what Karen was talking about there. Um, but I also want to just really quickly cover the uh, A-plus content, because this is another area that we did cover in that episode. And again, this is an example of good A-plus content, but it's not necessarily um, the best. Um, it is it's very descriptive, but in, in it has, you know, some, some highlights um, of benefits and features of the product, but it's, a, there's a lot of text. <laughs> um, and as Karen, what do you say about a lot of text in, in an A plus content, Karen? Well, I think, you know, I don't mean this in a rude way, but I think we're lazy. <laughs> I'll speak for myself. I'm People lazy. Are lazy. And no, I'd rather not read a lot. It's just give me the main points, you know, make it interesting, make it engaging. 
And I think these are beautiful image that, images that they have. And I think to like fully utilize it, I think what's working really well right now is less text and more banner images. So, right. you know, definitely put some text in. And I, like I said in that previous video, I think it's good to have like the main point. What's the one thing you want them to get from it? And right. you can see like even on these descriptions, like my wrists, that doesn't tell us what they want to get from it. Like my wrists are protected. Like what's the main thing, right? And if you can yeah. just have like one main point with maybe some, you know, a couple small sub points per a banner images, then that's so, so much more helpful and more interesting to look at versus like, yeah, they're beautiful images and there's a lot of text in there, but it just kind of like goes into like the fuzzy noise of my brain where I don't want to pay attention. <laughs> so <laughs> you don't want to get there, right? It's a exactly. Exactly. As a customer, you want to be you want to be as quick as possible. Explain benefits and features. So this particular user did take Karen's input, and uh, I'll show you an example of an updated one. So as you can see, it's a, this is a very similar product. Uh, it's also for the wrists, but you can see that they added a different language with mm -hmm. and, and visuals. This is exactly what Karen suggested. So it's it's the images, but it's also telling the story of. The product it's versatile these are all the different ways you can use or different workouts you can do the use these for it's trusted why is it trusted well because look how well it's built um, why choose us it's a comparison chart this is also something that karen suggested so not only did they take the the uh these um recommendations that karen gave um, and did a great job, uh, you know, showcasing um, testimonials by calling it customer's voice. Um, they, they even added a little bear logo here because their name is Bear Grips. This was oh, something that cute. Karen recommended that, 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 that they do because it's Bear Grips is the name of the product. So use a bear claw in the measurement. So not only can you get really a, a solid story image wise, um, they got a great video too. But then they repeated and they copied the same flow in the A plus content, mm -hmm. right? So oh, that looks amazing. So, so this okay. content that we're looking at here, guys, it used to look like this. So this page, this product that we're looking at right now is almost similar, exact similar to the one. And now we've got, again, the story. We've got beautiful imagery, really nice abs. You know, like this is what you want. <laughs> like, I want to look like that, so I want to buy this product, <laughs> right? They they really took advantage of, you know, you've got the story, versatile, trusted by athletes. Here's how we compare. This is why you should choose us because look really quickly. The user doesn't have to read a lot of text, right? The yeah. shopper doesn't. Have, I always say user and shopper. The shopper doesn't have to read a lot of stuff. They just are like, oh, cool. Look, customers are happy. They're not going to read. They're not probably even going to read these little blurbs, right? They right. just know, hey, lots of smiley faces, <laughs> and the customers are happy. That's great, right? So yep. that that's that's the difference between um, you know doing it this way again, beautiful imagery and things like that, um, but you know, telling the story it, yeah. is is a better way of doing it. And this is another example of the same the same uh, user. Again, they they had really strong. Um, actually, they they did. I think this was a three D one. Canal can answer, actually answer this when he comes on. I think we you had mentioned him that he should do three D images. So um, they updated all the images. They did. You know, again, these gloves are great because you can use them and you can touch screens with. You know, and it shows you that you can use your cell phone with it, right? Visually, mm -hmm. like even if there were no words on this image, you guys know what what this is saying. It's like, oh, there's the fingertip and I can use my phone with this glove on. So they really took the, um, I feel they really took your recommendations and just kind of really ran with them really, really well. Um, every single image here again tells a story, tells a benefit, tells you why it, you should choose them. Um, and then, you know, lets them, lets you know sizing. And then again, same thing, they repeated the, the flow of the story mm -hmm. in their A plus content. So, you know, if you're looking at redoing your uh, listings, guys, uh, if you haven't done any plus content, for example, um, I would highly suggest redo your, your main images while you're doing your A plus content, right? Because then you can marry or mirror the two, the two flows, right? Is, is that something that you, that you recommend, Karen? And, and why is that important for your, your images up here to also tell the story 
that the A plus content does as well. Yeah, I just think it gives a really strong cohesive brand theme, right? If you're kind of cementing that same message, because like I said, you know, sometimes it takes a while for things to sink in. So, you know, in sales, they talk about you need to see something, hear something seven times before you make a decision. So hopefully you're cementing that same thing. If you really want people to understand that yours is, you know, touchscreen tips, you have it in your title, you have it in your bullet points, you have it in your images, you have it in your video, you have it in your A plus content, you mm -hmm. have it talked about in your reviews so that people keep, oh, this is the one that has touchscreen fingertips, right? Or whatever the main thing you want to, you want yeah. to hide. So it's going to be really powerful to get that main message in that theme really yeah. cemented in the customer's mind. I loved that in the in the main image at the top, if you guys remember, it's just the glove with the phone, right? Mm -hmm. Here, because you have more room with the A plus content, they threw in the touch screen that you probably have or you might have on your bike, right? Or your exercise yeah, at smart. the gym, you know, whatever, whatever cardio machine you might be using, that might be a touch screen. So they threw that in because you've got more space the A plus content, right. but you can see that the the style of it is exactly the same as the as as the main image, um, and this is also important too. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but on the mobile phone, um, if you're viewing this, if I was viewing this on, the, on my mobile phone, Karen, mm -hmm. what would I see first? Would I see these images first here, or would I see the pro these these images here? Yeah, you would see your images first, and then you'd see your A plus content, and then your bullet points. Right. So, so keep in mind, guys, we haven't even talked about bullet points here, right? We, all I've been mm -hmm. talking about so far is images, but on your mobile phone, your bullet points are like pushed for further down. So it's really, and more and more people are shopping on their phones. So, um, Karen did definitely give some advice on their bullets as well. And they did incorporate their bullets were actually pretty good. Um, yep. so they just, you know, made a couple of tweaks and, you know, maybe added a couple more keywords, but their bullets were really, really good. Mm -hmm. However, as we know, and Karen knows, um, most people aren't going to read all the bullets, right? Your bullets are more there for indexing your listing. It's more for making sure that Amazon picks it up um, uh, or that Google picks it up. Um, but as far as the shopper experience, um, it's important to have bullets there and to kind of tell your why, like explain why the user should or shopper should buy your product. But it, I, I feel it's more important to tell that story in the images and the A plus content. What about you, Karen? Well, Vince, I just have to say, I'm very impressed with your skills. It's like, I think you can, <laughs> you can do my job now. You can say, explain it better than I can, but yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I wish I could explain PPC as well as you can, but not even close. <laughs> yeah, you're 100% right. It's all about showing the why and telling that story. And, you know, we're emotional creatures as human beings. So we want to feel connected through emotion, right? So if we're showing that and we're weaving this beautiful story of you know, hooking them in with emotions and justifying it with logic, then we're really helping kind of activate both sides of their brain to help them hopefully make a decision to to buy your product instead of, mm, I'm not sure if I want this, you know? Right. <laughs> and then feel confident that they're in the right place. They want your product. You've answered their questions. You've overcome their doubts and they're ready to make a buying decision. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's all done completely through just the power of, you know, um, good images, right? Yep. So um, so before we have Kunal on, um, you guys can let me know if he's here or not. Uh, let's answer a few questions. If they're, uh, I'm trying to look for ones that are specific to product listings. Um, if we can find a couple of questions so that since Karen is here um, before we have Kunal on. Um, so let's see, I'm kind of scrolling through myself to, um, wearing glasses oh, looks thank good. Thank <laughs> you. I have them right here. These are my glasses when I want to be invisible. <laughs> when I'm not looking so good. I'm like, you guys can't see me, right? <laughs> okay. I have those. I have those too. Those are reading glasses. <laughs> I, the reflective. Uh, yep. Okay, awesome. Canal is backstage. So let's... Um, hey, Canal, how are hey. you doing? Hey, guys. Hey, Karen. Hey, Vincent. How are you guys doing? Amazing. I'm really good. You. I'm really good. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So thank you for, I know I, I literally just sent you the link an hour ago. So. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. So thank you so for nice. taking the time. So um, uh, I don't know if you've been watching backstage, uh, Canal, but 
So basically, you know, uh, Kanal is the the uh, user, he LinkedIn user that uh, I've been working with, was working with in a case study, and he's the one that we didn't have him on the last call. We just did the the critique of the listings um, before, but then uh, Kanal had to actually take the the uh, necessary steps to do those changes that we just went through for you guys. So um, what I want to do really quickly is uh, I don't and I don't see any uh, product listing specific questions. So uh, uh, Karen, if you could hang on, hang on in the in, like uh, in the in backstage, and if we if I do see one, then we'll have Karen back on. But what I want to do with Canal first actually mm -hmm. is uh, kind of share the results of those changes. So I did a little bit of research um, before the call, and um, there's two particular listings that I kind of just wanted to share. Um, with you, <laughs> kind of for the first time, <laughs> right? In you front of this whole entire, in front of this whole. I'm going to see it for the first time too. Yeah, he's going to see the results of this. So, um, you know, so what? One of the ones that we we looked at here was the was the shield gloves, um, and then the titanium grips, right? So we just we just kind of did an overview of those. So, effectively, um, uh, Canal made all of these changes a month ago. Like he completed, you know, mo the bulk ninety percent of these changes literally one month ago. So what I did was just look in Seller Central. These are titanium. These are the, these are the gloves. So um, if we look at uh, the month prior, so February, February's got less days. So let's go 18th, right, to March 19th. And March 19th is kind of the day that Canal said, "Hey, I finished these optimizations." So, and we've got, uh, let's see, uh, 1,100 in sales, 54% of costs. Not the not not the best. Yeah. Definitely could do better, right sure. now. And we're optimizing campaigns as as we go, of course. But the big change that happened was on the nineteenth. So if I look at the same period from the twentieth of March to let's say yesterday, now we've got nineteen hundred in sales at thirty eight percent wow. plus, right? So this is important for you guys that are watching to understand is that. The majority of the changes that we're seeing just in that month are just because Canal put in the work to do those product listing optimizations. There wasn't a, I mean, the, the campaigns were still being optimized as they normally were, but they were still being optimized in the month prior. So what we're really seeing here is the power of updating your listings and what that can do with your PPC. Um, now, granted, these stats are going to change too because today's just the twentieth, and this is showing you guys through the nineteenth. There's more sales that are going to come in from PPC. You've got a seven-day pixel and a 14-day pixel. So this isn't even including all the sales. I generally don't even like looking at numbers from the previous day. I like like to give a week out. Um, but since this was scheduled today, <laughs> I wanted to, yeah. to share this with you guys, as well as with, with, with Kunal. Um, so the other one that we looked at, of course, was, was uh, the shield gloves. Um, and so I think that these are just named shield and I always misspell the word, the word shield that I, nope, I didn't. Uh, LD, yeah. I, -E -L -D. I, I yeah. yeah. I before E except after, I don't know. <laughs> so same thing. So, uh, again, can all confirm that he completed this, uh, around the 19th of, of March. So we're, we'll look at that month, you know, prior to this. Um, and we can see uh, thir almost 1,400 in sales at a 57% ACOS, right? Mm -hmm. Again, on the 19th, uh, the weekend of the 20th, these updates that we just went through with you guys were made on this particular listing. Uh, so we'll look at the 20th through yesterday. Uh, and over 2,000 in sales at 29% oh. ACOS. All right, so almost cutting that, it, it, yeah, the ACOS is, uh, I mean, almost cut in half, right? It was 54, 55, and now it's 29, um, and the sales doubled. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> or right. Or more than doubled. So, um, you know, it, again, that's the that's the power of of what we're sharing with you guys today is if you update your listing, it's just alone, uh, and still obviously maintain your campaign optimizations. Um, but really what it, what it can do for your, your PPC results, and we're not even looking at total sales numbers, guys. This is just the effects that it had on your PPC. I always like looking at, hey, what did it, what, how did it, what did it do to my total sales too? If I added the total sales to this, I'd have to be in ads. I was going to show you guys in ads, but a lot of you guys might not have ads or PPC tool. So I wanted to show you guys in a, in a, in a, a place where you guys know um, uh, and are familiar with. Um, so 
you, but you can speak to that, Canel. Have you seen a, a, a huge spike in total sales for titanium and and for and for the shield uh, shield gloves in the past thirty days? Yeah, de I mean definitely. I mean, I, I will say these are two newer products. So I mean, these are two things that we're just trying to get off the ground, to be honest. So there's not too much um, outside marketing outside of Amazon. So really, everything is just in this Amazon ecosystem to mm -hmm. really promote this. And you know, just as you saw in that month difference, just taking Karen's recommendations, um, mm -hmm. which. Karen really helped. Uh, she was inspirational with a lot of the listing images as well as some of the copy. Um, and then right. obviously Vince yourself, you know, guiding a little bit as well in terms of, you know, optimizing all the campaigns, making sure everything's well. But like you just said, I mean, we didn't change too much more other than bullet points, listing images and our A plus content. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think the world we're in, uh, you know, your listing really is your salesperson. So mm -hmm. I think a lot, there's two different types of people. Some people are very visual and, you know, clearly by updating your images and what Karen said was, you know, putting a lot of your features and speaking to them, mm -hmm. you know, on your images, opposed to what we had prior to this, we just basically had um, lifestyle images. So we had lifestyle Please. images of people using it. Correct. <laughs> so that's one of our older listings and you can see it. We just had a photo shoot, you know, people using it but not much more. And in terms of um, title and copy, I mean, to be honest, I was just using a lot more of um, like keyword stuffing almost. We weren't really speaking to the actual mm -hmm. customer. Um, and this is our old, this is some of our old um, the style. A plus content. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so basically, you know, as it, in, as Karen spoke to as well, it was just a lot, a lot of text, um, even though we had the pictures, you know, they're visually appealing, but Again, as I said, we have two types of people. Some people like to read copy, and for those people, this listing probably did you know well. But again, the world we're in with, you know, every social media app, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, everyone wants to just scroll really quick. You have their attention for, for, for about one to two seconds. So, um, as you can see in the next two listings that we did, you know, we took it piece by piece by just making it more visually appealing. And at the right. same time, we did add some text to uh, some of these images. Oh yeah, there's a lot. Just to kind of you know to speak out loud, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we can unpack these if you want in terms of going into them. But I mean, right now you guys can just see, you know. Yeah, no, the, the, the one thing I wanted to, to just note is that even though these are, like Kunal said, you guys, these are newer products, um, the campaigns themselves are actually not new. So, you know, um, these campaigns for the titanium are, you know, from August, I mean, not that old. But these Correct. campaigns have been running, you know, for a while. Some have been almost a year, um, this <laughs> December 2019. Uh, I think the shield gloves ones are actually a little bit newer, um, but yeah, like 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 uh, Canal was saying, um, there's, he's not doing a lot of outside marketing for this because they're they're fairly new. Um, but the campaigns themselves are, you know, these are all pretty much fall. Uh, this is a newer product, but these are not new campaigns, right? These are these correct, are not correct. brand new campaigns. These are campaigns correct. that have been here for a while, um, and of course, I'm I'm sure like having you know. Um, the pandemic and the rules being lifted and things like that, more people are actually going to the gym, maybe using these type of products. But you know what we're what I'm what I'm seeing is that with that timing, um, Kunal was able to take advantage of that as well and really showcase his product in a, in a, a much more visual branded way to take advantage of all those new, new people that are probably um, maybe even going to the gym for the first time. Um, you know, if you take a look at his and, and then other competitor products, um, whoever really does the better job storytelling is at, at the end of the day, um, those are the ones that are gonna win. And that's what that's literally what we're seeing, at least I feel like we're seeing um, in, in the results, you know, that we're looking at for these two sets of products. So that said, do you have any, um, uh, like, have you have you learned anything, or is there any tips that you want to maybe maybe shortcuts that you might have that mm -hmm. in, in thinking about like 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 how long did this take you to do? Uh, you know, sure. Kind of yeah, a, so a summary of, of your experience updating yeah. these listings. So I started with um, I started talking with yourself and Karen, and um, what Karen kind of helped provide was um, a general framework. So the framework was in two parts, meaning a framework for listing images and a framework for title and bullet points. Um, so she really helped with, you can see even our bullet points, some of the main features uh, and, and they're capitalized. So, I mean, if you didn't wanna read the whole thing, you can just read the first, you know, quick little sentence and it jumps out at you. You can just read those quick little, uh, little caps there in the front. And so mm -hmm. by doing that, that kind of helped um, kind of steer the ship a little bit. So by having right. those, you know, Obviously, our brand and you know our team can write these listings you know a lot better than 
um, just, you know, doing keyword stuffing or anything like that. So we really yeah. started trying to tell the story and we really started starting with the copy, really. So um, title and bullet points was the first two things that we worked on. And then I guess for tips, what we did was um, we do have an in-house designer that we work with. But hmm. what I also like to do is anytime I'm doing a new project, I like to hire three of everything. So if I'm right. doing listings, I hire three listing people. If I'm doing images, I hire three listing people. So, so we had, had three had we had three different lists. Was that these. you had three different designers give you kind of their their spin on, on what these should look like? Exactly. So we had a different designer for our shield gloves. We had a different designer for titanium grips, and then we did another one that we revamped as well. And that was a different designer. And uh -huh. I guess what I learned from that was one by having your copy all set, by having your title and the actual bullet points good to go. That really helped the designers when they mm. were starting to try to make these images because that they're using sense. your bullet points to make an infographic like this. Right. Um, so our initial in-house guy, he was using one of our old listings that had no updated uh, title, no updated bullet points. So that was actually one person, even though we've worked with him the longest, he knows our products. We did yeah. end up, uh, we didn't really use much of his edits. And oh, um, interesting. And again, no knock to him. It, he was just given the job of, hey, redo listings and this is yeah. how we, you know, he does it the way he does it, but without a guideline, like having title and having bullet points to go by, um, that made his job a little bit harder. So right. um, as we got into the listing images, um, one thing that Karen recommended as well is she had more of a layout in terms of storytelling uh, each of your pictures. Um, as you saw in our old listings, it was just product uh, and, you know, model, product, model, product, model, maybe a couple right. of reviews on there, but nothing, there wasn't too much to it. Um, and what we ended up doing is, of course, one, we started highlighting our main image. So one, we made our main image a lot clearer. Uh, it was much bigger. We had a really tiny image to start off with. Um, so it was kind of kind of hard to see the product. So uh, we had um, an, an easy thing people can do as well. So where I got these designers from is just a little tip for you guys. I ended up using Fiverr, if you're not familiar with it. That's F what I was going to ask you. Who did you yep. use? And Fiverr is yep. the one I was going to suggest. <laughs> yeah, so I used Fiverr for these. Um, Karen also recommended a uh, designer that she used. And one thing right. that I found tricky and then what the, the, the designer found tricky was um, unlike supplements or bottles for your main image, it, it was very hard if you have a soft product to make a 3D model of it. So uh, this, okay. this actually what you're looking at, <laughs> this is actually my hands. <laughs> what I did was <laughs> I took a picture of my hands and the graphic designer made it a hell of a lot better. But um, right. he basically- did they, did they put the glove on top of your hand? So I wore the glove. I literally oh, just yeah. took it with my phone. But <laughs> again, said, my quality. My hand, and they put the glove on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I did the That's picture amazing. with my hand and the glove, which is my hand there. And it did not look like that, of course. Uh, I took it with my phone, you know, regular lighting. But you can see what a designer can do. I mean, I don't have designing skills. But, you know, they add a little shout out to the background. They really filled up um, a lot of the white space. So you don't have too much white space. You don't have a small image. You want it to be large, clear. Um, and especially when you're in a sea of other products, you really want it to stand out. So that was the first thing we did with um, image one. That's great. Um, I was, I, you, I, I swore, I actually mentioned it, that I I thought this was a 3D because I do, I do remember uh, <laughs> recommending we were, it. We were trying it, to be honest. And the, the 3D images, I mean, they didn't come out the way we wanted to. It, it, it did look too fake, I would say, or too computerized. Whereas sure. if you see people that have um, supplements or bottles uh, or pre-workouts or proteins or something, they really have um, some really cool things you can do. So if you have a, a, a hard um, product, I would say, definitely do some 3D renderings of your product because it stands out a lot better than just a photograph. That's great. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, I absolutely regret. If you, if you can do the 3D, do it. But if you can't, then get a really good designer like 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 uh, Kanal has done. But thank you so much, uh, Kanal. Mm -hmm. I, I, this has been great for you to come on and then, uh, actually see the results of your labor. So I hope you're happy with, uh, yeah. <laughs> with, with uh, what we have seen. Um, I do actually want to answer some of the questions from the users. Um, sure. You're actually, uh, these are straight up PPC questions that I'm seeing. Let's start with, with Clara. Um, you're, you're welcome to stay on canal if you want, maybe learn some, some, some other stuff. Um, sure. But I do want to pop, pop the screen back on because Clara's question is, uh, let, let's pop, pop the screen back on. So. How do you feel about targeting ASINs? So I feel very strongly about targeting ASINs, Clara, because this is how you make sure that number one, this is this is Canal's listing, right? So right here, what we see on his listing is that uh, this company, RH Sports, is targeting his ASIN. We've got same one, I think. Yeah, this is really small on this new screen. Same company. So. These are sponsored display because they've got both positions. This is telling me this is DSP, 
uh, which is a different a different platform. But if you are brand registered, you can actually do the same kind of uh, same kind of thing. You can target in this position in this position with an image and um, a, a logo and a title. So I definitely recommend targeting ASINs because um, you also get uh, this position right here. You, all of these are sponsored ads. I mean, it says right there, sponsored. Um, well, these are sponsored. This is just inspired by. Four stars and above is all sponsored ads. And then of course, sponsored is all. So every single one of these uh, products that we're seeing here are targeting this listing, Canal's listing, right? Or detail page as Amazon likes to call it. So I feel very strongly, not only to protect your own brand, but you know, if, if Canal wants to, to target uh, these guys for some reason, then, um, <laughs> how brilliant was that nice <laughs> you can see that he is so this is, the, this is the power of doing asin targeting you guys i just showed you this is not canal's product but he is appearing here right at the top very powerful ad unit only you can only get this for sponsored display you can only do sponsored display if you're brand registered but yeah if you can do that def look at beautiful three spots Wow, you've got a really, really good PPC person. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, and, and you can see he's also here in, uh, oh, no, that's inspired by, but sponsor products related. Again, if you can, if you can find relevant products to target using your ASINs, uh, if you're not brand registered and you just, you know, you're running sponsor product campaigns, this is the area that you can target. You can, you can show up here if you're just brand, not brand registered, sponsored products, product targeting will make it so that you're available in this particular section here. So product targeting is extremely powerful. As you can tell, what it effectively does is it takes advantage of the kind of the work that this, this user is doing, right? Um, I just clicked on Day Wolf on Canal's listing, right? So hypothetically, somebody, a shopper might've found Canal's listing through PPC or through organic, and which means we're you know, the job is being done correctly, but then jumped on the listing and then clicked on this one for whatever reason. Uh, maybe the price was better or the star ratings were better. Not saying that it was. I don't think it was. Um, but users can or shoppers can click out of your listing. So use it for brand defense and then also use it to target, like exactly how you see Canola is doing right here. It, it, you know, is targeting these uh, these other products. So. That's a very long answer to that question, but definitely do product targeting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as a product shopper myself, I'm an Amazon person myself. So, I mean, to see that, I mean, the reason we targeted one of those products was one, we beat them on price. Two, we had a better star rating than them. Yep. Um, and, and just when I'm shopping for my own stuff, I mean, everybody's kind of looking for, you want to get the best deal you can, especially on a category you may or may not know. So I think exactly. being on other people's products, you know, they may be ranking higher than you. As I said, that's uh, probably a newer product. And that's kind of a way to leverage yourself for, a brand that may have been there for four or five years that uh, you know, we can't yeah. probably, you know, they just have a better ranking advantage, but that's an easy, easy way um, to get on their listing and get some eyeballs onto your onto your listing. Yeah, exactly. So let's go ahead, uh, let's answer Fabian's uh, uh, question. It's right under uh, Clara. We've got nine minutes. Uh, again, you're welcome to stay, Kunal, if, if you if you got to yeah, run. Yeah, no, I'm good, yeah, I'm at. good. <laughs> no, 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 I'm good, I'm good. All right, cool. So uh, Fabian asks, hello guys, when launching a new product, do you recommend to launch four types of automatic campaigns, one for each option? Um, you guys could keep Kunal on if he's, if he's still in the back, because uh, he, might he might have opinions on some of these too. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when launching a new product, uh, do you recommend launch four types of auto campaigns, one for each option? Uh, so that is, that is something that a lot of new users are, are, are doing. If you have the uh, budget to do that, so what he's talking about here, Canal, is that the auto, auto campaigns have uh, targeting for loose, close, substitute, and I always forget the fourth one. But there's, is, is he have it there? Sub, substitute, perfect. So yeah, technically you can do that. It, it's not something I recommend or don't recommend. If you've got the budget to do that, go ahead and do that. Um, it's kind of similar to the variations question. If, if you're limited on budget, uh, just launch the one campaign, check the data over time, what I find typically um, is that the substitutes, the substitute matching does the worst almost always. 
Um, and so you just turn that off and that'll get rid of all the search terms in your auto campaigns that are that are substitute to uh, matching. Um, but if you've got budget, then then do run a campaign for each and then you have an individual campaign running you know, uh, for each of those different match types to test that, that stream of traffic. Uh, Follow-up is, and do you recommend to apply any modifiers on new launching campaigns? Uh, yes, I do. Top of search, um, product placement, dynamic ads. So when launching new campaigns, um, and these are this is actually something that uh, uh, we did with Kunal, is um, what you want to do when you're launching new campaigns is get the data up front. <laughs> you want to get the data as quickly as you possibly can, because then you can optimize right. it down. So one way that you can do that is by when you're launching the campaign, you can just look at all of the suggested bids and then go a little bit above it, right? So if the bid is uh, recommended as 75 suggested, but you can see on the higher end, it's actually $1.25 that Amazon's recommending, you could do $1.26, right? You wanna make sure at the at the gate you're, you're getting traffic. Um, but if you don't wanna deal with any of that, you just take the suggested bid and then go to, uh, go to your placement bidding and just do 100%, because then you're just, you're doubling your bid because you're, you're saying I'm willing to go 100% higher than my bid, so which is I'm willing to double my bid. If you so if you take the suggested bid and just do 100% for the uh, the top of search placement, then you're effectively telling Amazon, hey, if it's more if I'm likely to get a sale from this, I'm willing to double my bid. So I much prefer that method than going in and doubling your bid for every single one right after launch to, or or checking when you're launching the campaign and increasing your bid by a penny. At the top, typically, if you just double your bid, you're you're maxing, um, you're, you're going to the max. Um, now, dynamic ads is uh, something that uh, have not done uh, really with with Kunal yet, but uh, dynamic bidding up and down or everything should be set to down only. So when you launch your campaigns, make sure when you're launching campaigns that it's set to down only. Amazon's being very tricky lately, and they're setting new campaigns to, to up and down. I don't know why certain products, certain categories, but there's when you launch a campaign they're doing up and down. I don't recommend that. Keep it at down only. That's what the algorithm is best suited for to begin with. And it consistently means that you're gonna spend less than your, your bidding, than the bid that you put in. Um, up and down only is really for campaigns that have established themselves. So this is not at launch, it's not established at launch. Um, and it's for campaigns that are making at least 50 sales a week under your ACoS target. Then you can test dynamic up and down bidding. Cool, next question. <laughs> Five minutes. Hey, oh, Karen, we got a question with Karen. Yay. This is for you, Karen. Would you recommend using the same strategy of not adding lots of texts or gift wrap or uh, for gift wrapping? I'm optimizing my A plus content. How would you recommend optimizing the listing with gift wrapping? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Personally, for me, I think always having more images is powerful. So I think. Canal did such a great job. His listing, I think, is like a gold standard now, especially his A-plus content mm -hmm. looks so, so good. So it I think does. if you can have, you know, lifestyle images of someone using your gift wrap, you can have, you know, cool icons. Is it an extra long roll? Is it easy to cut? You know, just focusing on those main things and easy to understand icons and then showing, you know, that dream lifestyle. I think it's a lot more powerful than tons of text because I'll be honest, I, I already said it. I'm not super into reading stuff and I'm a good reader, but I'd rather just look at pictures and quickly get what they're trying to tell me instead of trying so hard, you know what I mean? So that's my recommendation. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Santo, would you suggest doing bullet points and product description first or doing photos and infographics first or does it matter? Yeah, for me, I think especially if it's your first product and I think I know Santosh, how are you my friend? Um, so what I recommend is you're ordering your product that's a great time to kind of do the nitty gritty writing your listing, you know, doing your keyword research and then writing your title and bullet points. But in the meantime, having your, your creatives done, like Canal said, it took, you know, about a month to get everything done. So make sure, you know, you're using your time wisely. So as you're placing your order, hopefully you have a sample, you know, send that sample or you can do it yourself. I know you're really talented Santosh, but having your creatives done and while that's being done, then work on your title and bullet points. And, you know, it just depends. I like to be efficient, so that's what I would do. But Canal said, you know, it absolutely helped him use his, it helped his graphic designers create his creatives using, you know, the the sales copy. So have that yeah. done first, or at least give your creative 
team some direction. Like I want to highlight this in this image. I want to show this in my post content. But yeah, it will definitely help build out all of your imagery, your your images and your video and your plus content if you have those things done first. So that's yeah. my recommendation. And one more from Mick. And uh, this is pretty, how many images should your listing have? As many as it will take. <laughs> Great answer. Right? I mean, you, yeah. you, you should really take advantage of every single sp uh, spot. Uh, I think it's what, nine uh, placements you get? And then maybe for, and then you can have, how many videos can you have now, Karen? Do you know if that number has changed? Um, from my perspective, I think you can have quite a few. I know I've seen people that have, you know, three to four. Yeah. So, you know, your latest one you upload is going to be the one that shows up as your seventh image. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as far as like a dissection of how many lifestyle images, how many usage, how many informational. Again, I think, Kanal, you did such a great job. I thought it was a good balance of even with your lifestyle images, you're still kind of making them into infographics showing, mm -hmm. you know, here's where you can use them. And then even like with you know, some of the more nitty gritty features of it, you still made it engaging, and interesting to read. So personally for me, I just like to use that space as much as possible. So I like to have a good combination of, you know, I think I kind of look at them to be, to be honest, all as infographics besides your main image, because I like to have a combination of lifestyle images or product images and text on it. Kind of like, for me, I don't know if you guys are the same way, Canal and Vince, where I watch videos with subtitles because it makes it even more easy to understand. That's kind of how I see infographics. Like, show me the beautiful lifestyle image and show me and then tell me what you want me to get from that. Yeah, that that's pretty much so, that's something I use from Karen as well. Um, you know, mm -hmm. taking a nice lifestyle image and then putting your number one feature on there. So if you break down into three features, if you have three features for your product, then somewhere in those seven or so products, each of those pictures can highlight uh, that feature. So when one of them was versatility, and since it's versatile, we can use it in multiple things. That's a, that's a way that we got to use a lot of lifestyle images, but at the same time as an infographic, just talking about different ways to use it. So we integrated lifestyle model pictures that we had into the actual um, graphic to explain the product a little bit better. So if you have them, use them. If you don't have them, then you can, you can, you know, I've definitely seen listings where they just don't have a lot of lifestyle stuff with COVID it's very tough to do photo shoots and things. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can still do very creative things and designers can definitely do creative things to even use stock images. But like Karen said, you know, the, you know, the little text kind of helps and the little visual to give that definitely balances it all out. Mm -hmm. And you guys saw the results with the PPC. So <laughs> yeah, it's just, just, just the beginning too. So yeah, that's just the beginning. Exactly. Uh, we're going to go a few minutes over since I was a few minutes late. Uh, Can I say so, one thing real quick, though, Vince? Yeah, go for it. One thing I will say though, is I love that Canal is like such an action taker. You know what I mean? Like he instantly yeah. like took action, you know, took my cues with the sales copy and then instantly got it done and like totally nailed the vision. So Canal, you're yeah. no, not thank you so much, Darren. I appreciate it. So I <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> I mean, one thing I can learn, like I said, it's just uh, be around smarter people than yourselves. So that's very easy for me to do. So having Karen, having Vince, you know, <laughs> the, the stuff that they say on here really does work. And it, it really just I mean, it doesn't take too much time. Granted, yes, it did take a month, but the month is really, you know, the designer maybe needs a week or two weeks. And it's just kind of going back and forth to just, you know, solidify your vision. But the more details yeah. you give them. It won't take as long. And if I had to do it again, and we are trying to revamp some other listings, they're going, you know, twice as fast just because now we have a little bit of a framework and, Absolutely. you know, something to go by. But, um, you know, you should always, again, at the end of the day, you can always revert back. But testing is really important. And it's really cool to see the numbers that uh, Vince puts up yeah. Um, yeah. to really reflect, you know, the changes. So, you know, you really know you're in the right direction. So measuring is really important. If you don't measure, you're just going to be like, ah, I'm not sure yeah. if I'm doing it right. Like, I don't know. If, you, you don't know if you're not measuring. So, it's exactly. important to optimize your listings. And at the same time, it's important to, you know, try different things. And, you know, you can, even from these listings, we can even, you know, revamp them further down the line, you know, as we yeah. do more photo shoots sure. and things, but it gives you a good base. And I think you definitely take, you know, any advice that's from people <laughs> doing it a lot smarter than yeah. you and, uh, <laughs> you know, all that stuff really helps. The, and we're, we're sure to see more changes uh, with Amazon. I mean, they're going to continue to to do more branded focus type places for their listings. So we're definitely going to see more branding stuff. I think even uh, this year um, and video is going to be probably a lot more, we're going to see a lot more prominence 
um, in the video. We could probably do a whole separate episode on, on video, Karen. But uh, I want to. I know where it's 11:02. You guys are welcome to stay. I just want to make sure I get a few uh, more questions answered. If you guys can pop in Jake's question um, from way, and I know it's way further up. Um, and then I think um, Aud, uh, Aubrey or Audrey had a couple ones. I definitely want to um, answer as well because they were kind of like new. Um, kind of like new seller type questions. And I know a lot of you guys are in that place. Um, Jake's question is about variations. And um, so Amazon will show the variation they believe converts best for a given search term, correct? Yes, but initially they are going to test the different colors, right? So kind of how we were talking about in the honeymoon phase, like Amazon doesn't know um, if you've got a particular keyword doesn't have a color in it, uh, they're gonna run uh, and you've got different color variations all in one campaign or one ad group, I should say then Amazon's gonna test the different ones to see which one it thinks is gonna convert the best. So that's kind of like the honeymoon period we were talking about. Once it figures out which one is converting the best, then yes, then it starts funneling the, the, uh, the key or the search term to that particular color variation. But you don't know that until you have that data, right? You might think that your uh, you know, American flag version is gonna be the top seller, but then it turns out the black one is the top seller, right? Mm -hmm. Like. And I say American flag because canal has got an American flag version of a uh, wrist wrap, um, which actually does a lot better than I thought it was going to do. But <laughs> you don't know until you get that data, right? So uh, Amazon, yes, they, to answer your question, they're, they're going to give that search term to the link converts the best, but they have to get that data first. And so let Amazon do that testing for you, figure out which one's converting the best, and then maybe pull that particular color out and then scale it um, because you know it's actually going to, is is working the best, and you can either use that campaign this drop off the other ones, or you can uh, you know just uh, that's what I would say. I would say drop the other ones out, maybe put them in another campaign, and just scale up that one campaign with the, with the color that's converting. There's just Audrey. To just to jump in, Vince, on that sure. since we do we have a product uh, that has multiple variations, and one thing that we tested was you can use your main image um, to have the main product displayed and have that probably take up 90% of the actual picture. But then on the very bottom, the little 10%, we actually just put in the other actual colors of that product. So even That's though, true. for example, like you said, American flag is the main picture you see, but we might have a black one, a pink one, a purple one, any other colors in the bottom, just so the seller, I mean, just so the buyer knows there, there are other options and they may still want to click on it and yeah. still purchase something else so yeah that's uh, that's a that's a great way i, I would i would pop out because uh, i am looking at it right now but yeah if you can get your different color variations in one image uh in the, one of the main images then you're letting the shopper know hey um you know i came here because i just typed in uh, maybe black but then you might see another color and be like hey that's actually pretty cool i'm gonna buy an american flag version so let Amazon do that 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 testing for you, but try to get uh, your different variations in the images if possible. Audrey asks uh, about thirty days post launch conversion rate is about fifteen percent, but ACOS is still high. Should I still be concentrating on optimizing campaigns or take a hard look at what I can change? Um, if you can, um, I know this question is a little bit further up. So if you've learned anything in this in this episode so far, Audrey, that you could take advantage of and do, I definitely suggest again starting with or redoing like in this. In this example, we like re redid uh, Kunal or Kunal redid his listings. So uh, this is why we're seeing the results that we did. So you can redo your listings at any stage, and I recommend that you doing that. You know, taking a hard look at your listings probably every every few months. So, but at launch, um, you've got thirty days worth of data, so you really should be able to scale these campaigns now. Um, I don't know how aggressive you were with like how broad you went with your with your PPC. Um, but it's at the end of the day, it's all about data at launch. You want to get as much data as you can up front so that you can then reduce the the search terms or make them negative um, and you know find new potential keywords to target and you know flesh out your, your campaign so that you have all the right campaigns that you want. But 30 days of worth of data, you should be able to just look into, I don't know if you use ads or your search term reports, but you should be able to identify which search terms you need to make negative and which and which keywords maybe that you you need to pause, especially if they're exact keywords. Um, so I know we have, a, a, ooh, let's answer like two more questions. I don't want to keep you guys forever. It'll be like 11, 10 then. Uh, Abdul asks, hey, Vince, uh, you recommend creating campaigns only per one ASIN per keyword volume. How would you automate the sending of keywords from research campaigns to the correct proven campaign by keyword volume? Um, so this is actually a multi-layered question. Uh, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I do recommend creating, cam I do recommend creating uh, campaigns for one um, 
product uh, unless it has variations. I like to put the variations all in one campaign. I, that that's just me, um, especially if they're not, especially if they're not color variations. If they're just size variations, like Kunal's got his gloves, he's got small all the way to extra extra large, right? Um, at the end of the day, the bulk of the keywords for those are not going to be really the sizes. The the shopper is going to go onto the listing after typing in a relevant keyword and find the size that they want, right? It's so it's all there. So I definitely suggest including um, all of the ASINs into the, uh, let's say it's an hour campaign, um, and then give it a month, maybe give it two, and then look, hey, which sizes are do well and which sizes don't. Then you just turn off the sizes that don't do well, keep the ones that do that do, do well on, um, and at the end of the day, the ad is still driving the shopper to the listing that has all the other variations on it anyways, so you don't need to then spend the extra money on the size that isn't you know, converting well directly in the campaign. Now, as far as automating, automating the sending of keywords um, from research campaigns to proven, um, we don't do that by search volume because search volumes change all the time. So like search volume, are you talking about yesterday? Search volume, are you talking about the last 30 days? Um, when you're doing your keyword research up front, yes, you wanna look at your search volumes of the keywords that you want to target to make sure you're indexed for those and maybe leverage those into mm -hmm your campaigns and building those out into your campaigns. Um, but there really isn't a way to automate looking at a keyword, uh, you know, looking at the search volume, uh, you know, that would involve running a query maybe in uh, uh, one of the other uh, uh, magnet and then uh, maybe pushing it to a different type of campaign. Um, we do have, uh, and we'll end on this question because this is a good segue. We will have a lot more rules, um, capabilities, in the very, very near future, um, uh, Kunal doesn't even know this, but mm -hmm. uh, in 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 uh, in two weeks, uh, this particular session is not going to be uh, an ask me anything session. It's actually going to be a launch party. So so if that gives you guys an, an idea of what I'm, I'm trying <laughs> to say, literally in two weeks from today, this episode definitely come back. We want you guys to be here to to experience what we're going to be sharing with the updated version of ads, um, which will not be called ads anymore after this after mm -hmm. this date. So um, Karen's going to be there. We've got um, uh, we've got actually a bunch of people coming. Maybe we should have Kunal back on talking at the <laughs> product sure listing thing. section for the launch. Sure, party. sure. I'm always in. I'm always in. I'm excited though. I, even I want to know what's going to come in these next two yeah, weeks. Yeah, so. it's uh, it's going to be it's going to be um, to kind of segue into the question that just was there. You'll be able to, for example, our rules right now move keywords from the auto campaign to the research to a proven. Um, we'll be able to say, hey, this keyword proved itself in the uh, auto campaign. I want to push it as a broad keyword to the research campaign, but I also want to push it as an exact keyword into the proven campaign, which is actually going to turn into a performance campaign. So um, there's going to be a lot of different rule tweaks that you're going to, you guys are going to be able to do in the new system. So stay tuned for that, uh, but definitely uh, keep keep your keep your eyes and ears um, on our social. Mm -hmm. Feeds, you know, we, as you guys know, we're very good at posting stuff and putting stuff out there on our social feeds. Our, our wonderful Cassandra Craven does an amazing job of keeping you guys all informed. So keep a lookout. I think there might even be an email that's going out ab about it. So make sure you come back in two weeks. We're having a launch party uh, and it's May the 4th. So uh, we'll have a little bit of fun stuff uh, to do with, uh, with May the 4th for all you sci fi geeks that love. Uh, May the fourth be with you. <laughs> Thank you to Kanal for joining today's uh, session. It was so good. Thank to you guys. Thank you both for having me. Thank you, Karen. And Thank you, Vince. Appreciate yeah, you guys. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. Awesome. And to Karen for for yeah. sharing her wisdom as always. Um, thank you guys. If we didn't get to your questions, I apologize. There was a lot of content today. There was more content than questions today, which isn't common. Please pop those questions over to ppcamerahelium10.com. I will get them eventually, and we'll take a look, and we'll find ones to answer, much like I did at the beginning of this session. Um, and if you guys got topics. Um, however, <laughs> that said, the next episode is going to be, again, that launch party. And every single Tuesday from in May, basically, I will be on doing uh, one of these sessions, but it's really going to be focused on the new, uh, the new platform. So... Stay tuned for that. Definitely come back in two weeks and we'll look forward to seeing you guys then. All right. Take care. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Vince.